Coming up, the Raiders go for back-to-back -back wins at Allegiant. Josh McDaniels looks for his third career win against his former Patriots. Can the Raiders' defense continue to dominate against a struggling Mac Jones? Hall of Famer Charles Woodson gives us his take. That and much more as the Silver and Black Show starts now. Big lineup today. You know it's a party when Hall of Famer Charles Woodson comes through. Also, we chatted up with the MMQB's Albert Breer and the voice of the Raiders, our buddy Jason Horowitz, standing by as well. Welcome in Raider Nation as we continue to celebrate our 25th season of the Silver and Black Show. I'm Amber Theo Harris. Hey, that win, it sure felt good. The Raiders stopped a three-game skid with a primetime win over the Packers. Now they need to stack them up. And here in week six, the odds are in the Raiders' favor. That's because this year's Patriots are a long way from that last Super Bowl. Last week, the offense couldn't score a point against the Saints. And Bill Belichick, the defensive guru, has a team that's given up 72 points in their last two games. Clearly, the dynasty is long over. But for the Raiders, you can call this game what you want, a must win, a should win. But the bottom line is good teams beat teams they're supposed to. And Sunday, if the Raiders want to prove their slow start was an anomaly, they need to beat a Patriots team that's been historically bad. To talk about it, we welcome in Albert Breer from the MMQB. And Albert, it is so good to see you, my friend. Thanks for joining us. I, I do know you're live from Boston, so you're across enemy lines right now. That's right. That's right. It's always good talking to you, Amber. Well, as I said, you, you know what's going on in New England. I mean, even your outlet, SI, reporting Robert Kraft, not happy, doesn't buy into the belief that Bill Belichick has earned the right to step away whenever he wants. What is the state of the Patriots? What's going on in New England right now? Yeah, I would say this is probably as tenuous a spot as they've been um, since Bill Belichick got here in 2000. Like consecutive 30 point losses, the uncertainty at the quarterback position, the state of the roster in general. I mean, if you look across the roster, it's hard to find guys that you can say, yes, that guy's going to be here three or four years from now. And they lost maybe the guys who are the two best players on their team over the first month of the season and Matthew Judon and Christian Gonzalez. So the present is bleak. The future future is bleak. There's a lot of questions about the future of Bill Belichick here. Um, you know, obviously the impact Tom Brady here had over 20 years has been enhanced um, by what's happened since since Brady left um, after the 2019 season. And, um, you know, I, I it's it's really, I think, as unpredictable a spot as, as they've been in a long time. Like, and I, I think it's hard to say who's going to be coaching this team in 2024. And it's hard to believe that I'm actually saying that. But it's the truth right now. You just said exactly what I was thinking. I mean, it's hard to believe one of the greatest coaches of all time, you know, could be on the outs if, if things don't change. Um, 20 former Patriots now either work for the Raiders or are on the Raiders roster. How do you think this year's matchup with the Patriots is different than last year's for Josh McDaniels? Well, I think for the Raiders, certainly, um, Josh has more people that I think s sort of fit what they want from a program standpoint. And I you know, they went and got the big fish in, in 2021 or 2022 in going and getting Devontae Adams from the Packers and Chandler Jones from the from the Cardinals. I, this year was more about the middle class of the team and building up the guts of the team. And I think you see that with guys like Robert Spillane, guys like Marcus Epps and making the roster a little bit more balanced, making it a smarter team, making it a better situational team. And so the Raiders are a little bit different. And then I think, you know, this Patriots team, like, as shaky as last year was, I don't think this year's roster is as good as last year's roster. And that's the evidence that we have over the first month of the season. we got a lot of season to go, of course, and young players can emerge over time. But, but right now, it looks like all the things that were really tenuous about where the Patriots were when they went into Vegas last year, the quarterback situation, the young talent, the offensive line, a lot of those situations are even worse than they were a year ago. Well, Raider Nation does actually like hearing that. Um, and they're coming off of a big win Monday against the Packers. How big was that win, considering one and four and two and three feels like a massive difference in record? I agree. And I, I think it's like sort of one of those things where it's proof of concept is important in year two, right? Like I, I think as far as Josh McDaniels and his staff and Dave Ziegler and his staff selling their program and selling their vision to their locker room, and continuing to get buy-in, 
Year one can sort of feel like a grace period a lot of times. And I think to some degree, even though things weren't as they drew them up in year one, you, you get a little bit of that grace period. If you don't win in year two, then larger questions exist and not just on the outside. Again, that's on the inside. And so at some point you've got to prove that your concept is working. And I think going and getting a win after three straight losses against the Packers team, it's not what it was, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, but still a pretty good team was very, very big, you know, and the, with the alternative being four straight losses, I, I think it was really important to kind of continue to get that proof of concept. Like what we're doing here is working and it's going to work if you keep doing the things we're telling you to keep your foot on the pedal. So for all of those reasons, it's really important. And then, you know, you, you have a chance now in a short week to turn around and beat a Patriots team that's really coming in here limping chance to get back to 500 obviously is huge and nobody's been limping more than Mac Jones but Bill Belichick said he's going to get the start against the Patriots does Patrick Graham's defense have another big game I mean I they, they certainly should like you and you look at some of the matchups like the offensive line here has been I mean arguably a better a bigger problem than the quarterback like and if you look at their tackle position the, the revolving door they've had at those two spots over the first month of the season that's problematic Trent Brown hasn't been great and he's probably their best player at the position the right tackle position they move guys in and out of there um, and so, you know, with a guy like Max Crosby, who was outstanding on Monday night, you should be able to take advantage of Max matchups if you move them around a bit. Um, you know, and then I think if you look at the Raiders' weakness, I think you'd say, like, okay, maybe other teams can take advantage of them at corner a little bit, right? Like, with the depth at corner. The problem is that the Patriots don't have the sorts of weapons on the outside to take advantage of where the Raiders issues might be there, the corner position. So I think Patrick Graham, you look at the individual matchups that he's going to be playing with on top of the fact that he's got institutional knowledge of what the Patriots do. And because Josh McDaniels was there just a couple of years ago, should have institutional knowledge on the individual personnel. Like he should have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't work for Mac Jones. I think he goes into this game with a pretty nice leg up. I love the way you put that institutional knowledge on the flip side. The Patriots defense, as I mentioned at the top of the show, has been historically bad. They gave up back to back 30 point games. The Raiders offense has struggled, though. Is this an opportunity for Jimmy Garoppolo to get after a defense that he has institutional knowledge of? Well, isn't it weird, too, that you'd be talking about this like as like a get right game? Like how, when how long has it been since the Patriots were the get right game uh, yeah. for anyone, you know? Um, the formula coming into the season for the Patriots was they were going to win with their run game and defense. And it's a different formula than we've seen in the past. But really, the idea was, OK, we've got a what we think is a great young running back in Ramondre Stevenson. We're a little shaky on this outside. We're young at quarterback and we've got a really good defense. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sort of play, I guess, like the like the Super Bowl 25 Giants played, you know, when Bill Belichick yeah. put staff there and shorten games and highlight what we can do defensively. And as we just spoke about, like the offensive line has undermined that effort on offense. And then on defense, they were actually playing really well until that Dallas game. And then they lose in that game, Christian Gonzalez, who might've been the defensive rookie of the year at the point when he went down, Matthew Judon, who's been their best player over the last three years. And that changed everything. And so I think that that's the issue the Patriots have defensively right now is you had a premier edge rusher. You had a kid who was evolving into being a premier corner and you're losing guys at premium spots now. And that means your number two corner becomes your number one corner. Your number three corner becomes your number two corner. Your best pass rusher who right now, I mean, might be DH wise. Like now, instead of seeing matchups because Judon was getting double teamed, that doesn't exist anymore. And so that's created an issue for them defensively. And that's why I think this could be a get right game for the Raiders because the Patriots are missing who I think were their two best players on that side of the ball. Uh, Patriots rookie Michael Mayer at tight end. He was targeted a couple times last week. They got him going. You have covered oh. many, many McDaniels offenses. I kind of remember this guy by the name of uh, Rob Gronkowski that was pretty big. He used a lot of tight ends, a lot of slot receiver usage. Yet we haven't yeah. seen that in Vegas just yet. Do you expect we will see more going forward? I think that that's the way they're leaning. I mean, when they paid Hunter Renfro, I think that was the idea. Now, that hasn't really played out the way that they had envisioned, but, you know, that's why they signed Jacoby Myers and they paid Jacoby Myers what they paid him. 
And, you know, really one thing that we've seen from those offenses in the past, and that's going back to Charlie Weiss, you know, 20 years ago. And what's unique about them that's different than other offenses is the passing game is really built from the inside out, where so many passing games we see across the NFL, the best re receivers are on the outside, the best pass catchers, most production is on the outside, and then they work in. And so, yes, I think that that's a big piece of it is that you're trying to become really good at those inside receiver spots, whether it's a tight end or a slot receiver. And then the other thing you want with those guys is the ability to move those guys around. Myers already has that. And I know that they're, they're, they're optimistic that Michael Mayer with how smart a player he is, his pedigree coming out of Notre Dame, that he's going to be that type of player too. If you look at it, Amber, like, I mean, you can find a ton of snaps from when they were in New England when Gronkowski was actually lined up all the way outside, you know? Oh, yeah. And then you see situations where Edelman or Amendola might have been on the outside. And you had the two inside guys and Edelman and Amendola on the field at the same time. And so, you know, the idea is these guys are all smart enough to play on the inside because there's a lot going on in there, but versatile enough to play outside. So, again, it's sort of an inside out um, philosophy. And I think you can see the way that they value those positions and how they paid Hunter Renfro last year, how they paid Jacoby Myers this year, and then where they drafted Michael Mayer this year. Uh, Jacoby Myers has been wonderful in this offense. He's on uh, pace for a career year. Why do you think he's found so much success? He wasn't catching passes from Jimmy Garoppolo in his time uh, with the Patriots. Yeah. So what has clicked for him? He's a really good fit, you know, and like he knows what Josh expects. But beyond just that, um, he's able to play the different receiver spots, and that gives Josh um, a little bit more leeway to use him in different ways. And I think it really weaponizes Josh's offense. Like one of the things that's really, really difficult to deal with when it comes to the way the Patriots played offense over all those years, again, under Charlie Weiss or Josh McDaniels or Bill O'Brien, was you didn't know when they broke the huddle where those guys were going. You know, they use tight ends in the backfield. They use inside receivers outside. They take tight ends and move them outside. When you broke the huddle, you didn't know where the five skill guys were going. And so having guys that can play different spots, that are smart enough to play different spots, that have experience play, playing different spots, are the most valuable guys in Josh's offense. It basically weaponizes what Josh is able to do from a scheme standpoint. And that's one of the reasons why Devontae Adams as an outside receiver was so valuable to them because they knew they could move him around. He played with Aaron Rodgers. So there were different ways that he was being asked to, uh, to, to, to execute at the position. That's, you know, I think a guy like Jacoby Myers is really good in this sort of offense. A, a former quarterback who's got a great head for the game and can play multiple spots is always going to be valued in this sort of offense. It does feel like for this offense, with all the talent, the best is yet to come. And Jimmy Garoppolo's best work, when you look back with the 49ers, comes off of play action. The Raiders, though, are 23rd in play action usage in the NFL right now. How important is it? That's usually an indicator that the running game isn't going. So how important is it for Josh Jacobs to get going so that Jimmy can do what he does? Yeah, I mean, it's important for Josh Jacobs to get going to activate the play action game, of course. And then I think on top of that, it's important to be in these games and not playing from behind. You know, like that's a big part of it, too. Play action isn't effective if you're down by 20, you know, mm -hmm. and so being keeping these games close early on and giving the running game a chance to take and giving the running game a chance to develop over the course of a game is an important piece of this too. So it's about game control. It's about getting the running game going. It's about being in close games all the way through and not playing from behind. And yeah, I, I mean, I, I certainly think if you look at Jimmy Garoppolo's experience going back to New England and then in San Francisco where everything is off the run game, you can see where you know the quick trigger he has, the ability to get rid of the ball from different body positions, all of that. That really comes alive when he's playing fast and playing off of play action. And so the more they can do to get Josh Jacobs going, the more they can do to stay in these games, um, you know, and, and extend games to the fourth quarter, the better off they're going to be a quarterback because of what Jimmy can do off of play action. Albert Breer, one of the great journalists in the game. So great to talk a little football with you. It was like old times. I know. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks a lot, Albert. We'll see you soon. Coming up, the Raiders defense has been balling. Hall of Famer and Raider legend Charles Woodson stops by next to tell us how they can keep it up. The Silver and Black Show is brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. 1800, the best taste in tequila and official partner of the Raiders. Love. 
protected in the air and picked second for Spillane. Peters made the play and Spillane there to clean it up. Spill is a football junkie and uh, you know, we did our research before we were able to, to have an opportunity to sign him in free agency. And uh, every person that we talked to about him uh, that had some really intimate knowledge about him just said how tough he was, how much he loved the game, how much he worked at it, how smart he was as a football player. He's a really good communicator. He's a connector. Um, he's always available. I mean, he's been durable, you know, even though he's playing a very physical position inside a middle linebacker. So uh, those people were all accurate. And, yeah. and we've got to see that and, and so Pat's interaction with him right off the bat growing into the green dot role that he has um, you know and just being the guy that's really the glue inside to the defense um, just a really solid you know football player and a guy that we're really happy to have for the full interview of Josh McDaniels with JT the brick visit Raiders.com or the Raiders official YouTube page the Raiders upstart defense has been one of the positive storylines of 2023. They held Justin Herbert to under 200 yards passing in week four and gave up just 13 points to the Packers last week. Can they keep it up? Our next guest can help us decipher that. Hall of Famer Charles Woodson. Join us now live from the road. Be careful out there. Charles, don't, don't do anything dangerous. Um, but first of all, happy, happy belated birthday. We saw you at Allegiant Stadium celebrating with all Raider Nation. Uh, how was the big day? Man, it was so much fun. Uh, honestly, it had to be uh, one of the most uh, one of the most fun times I've had as a fan. You know, sitting there, I was in the wind club. You know, I had some of my friends, some of my former former teammates were celebrating with me. Uh, came to the lecture. You know, you had Shirt and DJ Quick performing at halftime. Like, man, it was it was an unbelievable experience for me. Yeah, just just as a fan of the game to have all of those different things going on. So uh, hey, happy birthday to me, man. And thank you to the Raiders and the Win Club. Uh, for taking care of me and taking care of my folks, man. It, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, shout out to Will Blackman. I saw him sneaking in in, in that picture in the background. Um, the Raiders defense, they won that game for, against the Packers. What did you see from that defense that you loved in that game? Well, I think the one thing you have to do is, you know, in, in those moments where you have an opportunity to make a play, you know, an opportunity to um, stand out in the game, you got to take advantage, advantage of those moments. Um, we all know about Max Crosby and what he's going to do, the way he plays the game. He's relentless and, you know, he, he, he keeps pressure on quarterbacks. But not only that, in the run game, he's all over the place. But I think, you know, you know we had interceptions, you know, which I'm always harping on uh, for our team is to get interceptions. And they got their hand on a bunch of balls uh, during that, that game uh, in order to help seal the game, too, as well. So love seeing guys getting turnovers and uh, just that relentless effort. I think those guys follow behind Max Crosby and I think that's why the defense has been successful. Yeah, there's no doubt Crosby is turning out to be a once in a generation type of player. Let's put up some of his numbers. I know you can't see him, but uh, he's first in quarterback pressures. He's first in hurries in the NFL right now. He's fourth in sacks. You won defensive player of the year back in 2009. I know it is early, but should Max be in these early discussions for 23? Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. I think anybody who pays attention to the game uh, they see what type of impact he has on the game. I don't think going into this season, you know, anyone uh, was really talking about the Raiders defense. Um, and, and I think if you're looking at the defense, you, I don't know how many players on, on the defense people can name other than Max Crosby, uh, maybe uh, Marcus Peters because he's been in the league for a while, but you don't know a whole lot of guys on the team, uh, but you see them going out there and, and putting the team in position to make plays. Uh, or, and to win games, and a lot of that is because of Max Crosby, and I believe it's his leadership. So when you got a guy on a team like that uh, on either side of the ball that really commands the attention of the opposing offenses and has his team following behind him and, and, and his energy and his level of play, then you got to put him. Uh, you got to put him in the mix for Defensive Player of the Year for sure. And Charles, I want to go back to what you just said a few moments ago about turnovers. We know you got that gold jacket being a ball hockey. You had 65 interceptions yourself uh, in your career. When a team does start for forcing turnovers like they have the past six quarters of football, does it just start to really become contagious? Are you expecting to see more against the Patriots? 
Yeah, you know, the, the thing that we always say as as players, um, you know, on the defensive side of the ball is that turnovers and interceptions, they come in bunches. You know, I think once you start getting interceptions, getting your hands on balls, then it, it just starts to become, uh, like you said, it becomes contagious and you start to go out there and expect it to happen. You start to expect to get interceptions. So I think it is something that will continue for those guys because you'll see it on film and Listen, when you go into the film room and, and everybody's sitting around watching the film of the game and you get your hands on, you, you get an interception, you're like, hey, man, I, I got to get one too. And so guys go out there, man, with that mindset that I want to be the guy on that film in the film room that, that everybody's looking at saying, hey, man, great job, you know, you know, great interception. So I think it is contagious and uh, it, it's, it's, man, it's beautiful to see, man, anytime. I love that if he gets the hands on the ball and, and, and gets that turnover. Yeah, I love that it becomes a competition in the defensive backs room. Um, I mentioned the six yeah. great quarters that this team has been playing as far as defense, giving up just 13 points in the last six quarters. Now they've got to sustain that. What is the key to sustaining that type of dom dominance? What more do you want to see? Well, I think there's there's two things really. Um, you know, staying healthy. You know, staying healthy. And, and not reading your press clippings, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's, it's, it's been fun, of course, to, to, you know, churn out a couple of games and, and for the defense to be a focal point of that. But it, you still got to, each and every day, you got to go out there, man, and try to continue to get better. Like, there was some, you know, there, of course, when you, you know, you win a game, you feel good about it. But when you get in the film room, there's all, there are a lot of things that you have to correct. And so if those guys can continue to, you know, go in the film room, be critical, of themselves and, and 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 say to yourself say to yourself hey listen whatever happened in this game it's a correctable thing i can't do that again and so if they do that then they'll continue to get better as a defense and get better as a group um and then like i said you know you just got to stay healthy I, I was reading a report today and you know there's a bunch of guys who are limited in practice or not practicing so you got to stay healthy uh, but you also got to stay focused on the main goal and you got to continue to grow, especially the young players like the rookie out of Maryland, Ja'Korian Bennett. When you watch him play, what advice do you have for a young corner that has been thrown out there and got a lot of opportunities? I know he was injured in the last game, but has gotten a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I think, man, just go out there and, and really just play with confidence. Like, you're here. Like, you're on this level. And so continue to play with confidence. Uh, continue to, to to keep your mind sharp in terms of what you're seeing on the film and, and being able to apply it to the field and and you know try to be smart as a player you know don't put yourself in harm's way in terms of you know uh, you know tackling and things like that just just get the guy down you know what I mean you don't have to make hard hits just get him down and protect and protect yourself because you want to be out there for the long haul uh, so that that would be my only advice, man. He, he's going to get all of the experience because he's getting the opportunity to play. And, you know, once you get experience, you know, then that that'll start breeding confidence in this game. So just continue to play with that and grow on it. How about your thoughts on Amik Robertson? Came up with the big play. He was filling in. I got the start instead of Nate Hobbs, who was injured. Are we really seeing some secondary depth start to develop? Hey, it's next man up. Next man up, um, and and he came up with a huge play. I know he's a he's a guy. Um, I saw a comment from him uh, saying that he knew that they were going to come after him. Um, so I think he plays with a little bit of chip on his shoulder, you know, where he's trying to uh, prove people wrong about himself. So hey, when you got somebody that's hungry and they get an opportunity, and then they make the most of that opportunity, then again, I keep talking about confidence. If you can continue to gain confidence in yourself as a player, uh, you'll continue to get better on the field as well. So, man, very happy for him to be in a position to make a play and then make the play. And then on Monday night football, too, come on. You can't get no better than that. <laughs> That's the way you get your name in the papers. Um, let's talk a little bit about this That's defensive right. line. Um, the outside pass rush for the Raiders obviously gets all the attention. But what are your thoughts on the interior line play? Well, that's the thing, you know, I've, I've been harping on that, you know, for uh, with the Raiders for the past couple of years is, is interior pass rush. Um, listen, man, Max Crosby is an unbelievable player. Uh, and it seems at times that he is the one guy that's going to get pressure on quarterbacks. And that's not enough. You know, you got to have somebody on the interior line that can push up the middle 
and perhaps flush those quarterbacks to Max Crosby. Um, it's one of the reasons why, you know, when we were, you know, sitting there with that seventh pick and, and, and Jalen Carter was there at, from, from Georgia, I'm thinking that would be the perfect fit to put on that interior line. Uh, but that didn't happen. So that means there's got to be somebody out there that the Raiders have to be looking at to try to bring on this team. I know the trade deadline is coming up, so I know there may be some moves that can be made. But you got to find somebody on the interior pass rush or some depth on that interior pass rush that can make pressure up the middle of the field. Robert Spillane, Marcus Peters, two veterans added in the offseason. How much of an impact have they had on this defense? Well, you saw it in the last game. Um, you know, two huge picks by Spillane, and I think the last one, Marcus Peters had a hand in it as well. And, you know, he got the pass break up, tipped the ball in the air, uh, and, and it was an interception. So great to, I, I, you know, it's always great to have veterans and guys on your team that have been through it in the league a little bit, understands the game, you know, understand how hard it is to win in a game. And, and you expect those guys to do the right things at the right time. And that was a, that was a huge play uh, late in the game, you know, with the, with the pass breakup by Marcus. And so, man, good to have those veterans in, in the locker room because they're guys, they are guys that the younger guys can lean on as well, you know, for anything that, you know, they may want to know about the game of football. So, Glad to have those guys on our side. One last question from a defensive back perspective. What does Jimmy Garoppolo need to do to clean up and limit the interceptions? You know, I think you know, for Jimmy, you know, I think a lot of times when he's in that pocket and, and the things aren't looking clean for him, you know, I think he gets a little bit of a little bit uh, jittery in the pocket. And so he just looks to unload the ball somewhere. I think sometimes, man, if you don't have it, Take five yards, take off, run, get yourself down and, and get ready for another play. And don't feel like you have to throw the ball down the field if you don't think you have it. So I think he's got to be a, a clean, clean, this, clean himself up a little bit in terms of in terms of his reads and, uh, you know, make sure he's not turning that ball over because those are crucial mistakes that we can't have. Charles Woodson, so great to talk to you. Thanks for taking us along on your journey. I feel like I'm going wherever yeah. you're going with you, and it's been fun. Thanks a lot. You are. Hopefully we'll see you again yep, soon. Appreciate it. All right, still to come ahead on the Silver and Black Show, he gets an up-close and personal look at the Raiders each and every week. Raiders play-by-play -play announcer Jason Horowitz is next. Taylor to the right of Love, two receivers each way. Shotgun snap, three-step drop, eyeing the middle, pressure up the middle. Love out of the pocket, throws downfield for the end zone, intercepted! Amik Robertson in the back corner, picks it off in front of Watson, and the Raiders defense just seals the victory here in Vegas. Ah, uh, never gets old. Week five ended with a bang. Who will come up big this Sunday at Allegiant? We welcome in the man that made that amazing call last Sunday, Jason Horowitz, Raiders play-by-play -play announcer. Good to have you back on the show, buddy. Hi, A.T. It's nice to talk to you after a win, huh? I know. It always feels good. Solid win. <laughs> Everybody's feeling good right now. But I have to ask you about this offense because, look, they're only scoring 15 points a game. So much talent on that offense. Um, are you surprised that they haven't been able to get things going, especially this was supposed to be the strength of the team? Yeah. I, I, think, it's, I think it's a couple of different things. Number one, I think the offensive line is really struggling. And, and we're seeing that, right? Whether it was Aiden O'Connell or Jimmy Garoppolo, there's pressure up the middle. There's there's pressure off the edges, and so that's that's certainly playing a role. Um, you know, we're all watching Josh Jacobs kind of juke in the backfield or bounce around really before he gets to the line of scrimmage. And it, he did that last year too. But when he hit the line, there was holes, and and there aren't really that this year. And so it, it's I, I don't think that's anything that should be surprising. Uh, the fact that this offensive line is. You know, the fact that they're not scoring 20 points when you are having those offensive line struggles. Yeah, we'll see if Thayer Munford, I know he's getting more opportunities instead of Jermaine uh, Illuminor, so maybe some changes will help out. But, yes, they need to get Josh Jacobs going. 11 yeah. sacks, though, in the last two games on Jimmy Garoppolo. He just can't take those kind of hits, right, Jason? That's something that no, has to be cleaned no. up. No, Yeah, and we'll remember, the, the crazy thing is, if you go back to the first two weeks, they didn't give up a sack 
And they were the first team, I think, in eight years not to give up a sack through through the first two weeks of the season. That number might be off a little bit, but like they were, you know, at least from that perspective, very different than it than it has been the last three weeks. And whether it was Jimmy uh, against Pittsburgh or Green Bay or Aiden O'Connell, um, you know, getting smushed by Khalil Mack six times, like none of that can happen moving forward. You know, the good news is you look towards this week. The Patriots have injuries all over their defense, and the guy that would be their version of Preston Smith or Rashawn Gary, or Khalil Mack, Matt Judon, who's been so good, um, whether it's Baltimore or now New England, he's out. And and he might be out for a while. Their rookie corner, Christian Gonzalez, who they took 17 overall, is on IR. Uh, and he was playing really well before. So they've got a lot of injuries all over. It, it feels, Amber, like this is a game where the offense has to kind of have an explosion. But well, we've said that before, and, and it hasn't happened yet, right? The Steelers were giving up a ton of rushing yards. The, the Packers were giving up a ton of rushing yards, and they just haven't been there yet. So we'll see. Yeah, you mentioned the presence, uh, no presence of Christian Gonzalez and Matthew Judon, also Jack Jones, Marcus Jones. So that secondary is really banged up. Hopefully we'll see Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers, who's going up against his old team, get going. But when you look at Devontae's numbers statistically, he's having a great year, one of the top receivers in the NFL. But why does it feel – you watch the games, and a lot of this is feel. Why does it feel like there's still so much more meat on the bone when it comes to Devontae, especially – in the end of the game in crucial situations. Yeah, I, I think part of it has to do with, you know, the, some of those numbers you were just talking about all came in one game. And, and that's not fair to Devontae because, you know, you know, he left the Chargers game in the second quarter and came back and still had seven or eight catches in the second half alone. And he had big numbers early in the Buffalo game, but then the offense completely stalled. So I think that's part of what goes to what you're getting to, Amber, is that like, Devontae's had before before last week he was second in the NFL in catches and he was top five in receiving yards like, like all those things that we have come to know about the future Hall of Famer and what he's done for the silver and black and setting all the records last year but because the offense isn't scoring and because it, it feels like they're coming up a little bit short in some of these crucial situations on offense uh, I think it feels like there's more there but but the other part to it too is that last year you know Matt Collins Collins became the secondary receiver and it wasn't Hunter Renfro and it wasn't Darren Waller. And so it felt like it was all on Devonte, and he had a hundred catches and 15. Jacoby Myers is a legit one, a receiver. You know, I, I'm sure the Patriots would love to have him. They, they paid the same money in the contract to Juju Smith Schuster. And there's nothing really they're getting back for it. And so I think that's part of it is that some of that production, some of that impact you're seeing from Jacoby Myers. And I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, I think as we go forward, uh, people are really going to have to count for Jacoby Myers and not see it as just a couple game fluke. And that will open up things for Devontae Adams even more. Um, Patrick Graham in this defense. Look, Patrick Graham has taken a lot of heat, but we have really seen some promising adjustments, especially in the past game and a half. What have you seen from this defense that you think they can build on towards sustainability? Well, it, I think, first of all, the takeaways, right? The, the three takeaways they had against the Chargers, you get a couple of, you know, the batted ball and Robert Swain's right place, right time, but you'll take them any way they come. But even if you go back to the Chargers game two weeks ago, Trayvon Merrick had the interception, and if he didn't have a club on his hand, <laughs> uh, he probably had a second one, too. You know, the one in the back of the end zone where, uh, where Justin Herbert was going for his tight end, he probably would have had another one. So I think you put all those things together, um, that's starting to come to life for a defense that, that they've been talking has to be part of what their staple is. And, and I think the other thing you're starting to see too, is they are making more game winning plays. You know, last year, the defense was something and probably for years that people have pointed to that Raiders defense is the reason that they're not winning enough games. It's not that this year, the Raiders defense with the exception of Buffalo has made plenty of plays and they've made a lot of plays to win games and and if that keeps going forward you've got to think with the weapons on offense that it's going to be a balance and you know it's going to be a pretty interesting season all right time for a bold prediction is it going to be about the offense or the defense what are you going with give me one big bold prediction for Sunday. <laughs> so so my first thought was like well you know we're finally gonna have a game where it's not close and we don't have to like sweat it out in the fourth quarter but you know that's not how it goes in my tenure as the voice of the Raiders so <laughs> so it can't be that it's got to be on defense and I, I do think that takeaways are contagious. And so you get one against the Chargers, probably would have been two, could have been two. Um, you get three against the Packers and and two of those in the second half. And you start to think that now there's the confidence of being in the right place, right time. You had the close calls in the first three games where they didn't get any. Marcus Peters should have had a pick six. 
There were two takeaways that were negated by penalties. If all those don't happen, this is a defense that's starting to like get their hands on the football like they've talked about all camp. I think they get two, not one, but two Ooh. takeaways against the Patriots. And it starts to steamroll as we head towards Chicago next week in Justin Field. All right, I'm going to take your prediction one step further. I'm going to predict that the Raiders hold the Patriots to just one field goal. Three points is the only amount of points that can be scored against the Raiders. So, you're, hey. you're, you're, going to, you're going to say the Patriots are going to have a total of six points in three games? Uh, yep, six? that's what I'm going to Hey, <laughs> they haven't showed us anything in the past two games. Why not keep the party I going? I know, but that would be, like, historically bad. Well, they have been historically bad. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks for joining us. We can't wait to see you out there at Allegiant Stadium with the call. It's always good to have you on, Jason. Talk to you soon. All right. Coming up, it is one big thing. Max Crosby gets another big honor. We'll tell you why he should get an even bigger accolade next. The Silver and Black Show has been brought to you by Cox, proud partner of the Las Vegas Raiders. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, nonstop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Chevron with Techron gives you unbeatable cleaning and mileage. Chevron, together ahead. Time now for one big thing. Let's celebrate the phenomena that is Max Crosby. If you watch Mad Max play and he doesn't make you want to run through a wall, then I got nothing for you. Wednesday, he was named AFC Defensive Player of the Week for the fourth time in his career after that dominating performance on Monday Night Football. His eight tackles for loss are third in the NFL, and he has three fewer sacks than T.J. Watt, who currently leads the league. Let's be real, though. Although the Raiders' defense has played well of late, the superstar pass rusher has been unstoppable with not a lot of help. He's often fighting through double teams and still finds a way to wreck the game. It's time to put Crosby in the early defensive player of the year discussions, not just because of the stats, but because of his heart. That's what makes Crosby a once-in-a-generation player. Every snap, every down he plays with a no-quit intensity that you simply can't teach. He pushes his limits, even sparring with UFC fighter Sean Strickland this past offseason. Just putting myself in situations that I don't want to be in and just doing it. And, like, I've just seen, you know, once you break, like, past that, like, mentally you could always tell yourself, like, all right, I'll be good after just this. But it's like, no, I give myself no option. There's nowhere to run when you're in a cage with another, you know, professional assassin. And it is what it is. But um, once you do things like that and you just you live like that, then you get into games and it just becomes like you're the one hunting people. You know, it's not like you don't feel you're not fearing anything. You're not thinking about anything. Um, you don't you don't think you just go. You can think about it. You can talk about it. You can do it sometimes. But if you're really trying to do it at the highest level, you got to do it every single day. It's got to be a way of life. You know, like I've, I've said before, there's no balance. Uh, when you're in it like this at this level, you can't, you know, you can't be 50 50. Um, and that's just the reality. So, yeah, that's what I try to tell the young guys. Like, some people don't want to sacrifice certain, shit, but if you don't want to sacrifice certain things, then you're not going to get what you want. You know, it just, that's honestly, you know, it's just the truth. And, uh, you know, I've talked to Tim Grover. He says the same exact thing. You know, he's one of the greatest trainers, trained Michael Jordan. And he talks about it all the time. There's no balance. Uh, you got to be relentless. Um, there's a difference. You know, you could be good, you can be great, and you can be unstoppable. So, like, for me, I want to be unstoppable um, in everything I do. So that's why I try to show the guys. Before we go, and in the spirit of Max Crosby's never give up attitude, let's take some time to acknowledge the NFL's crucial catch campaign this week. Today, we wear pink to celebrate all breast cancer survivors like my mom, Chris, and my best friend, Tania. We also wear pink to honor those we lost, like my Aunt Marcia and my dear friend Tara. And to those of you battling all cancers right now, we see you, we're praying for you, and everyone here in the Raiders organization is standing with you. That'll do it for us. Hope to see you guys at Allegiant Stadium Sunday. It's Patriots Raiders, 1.05 p.m. kickoff. Catch us right back here after the game for Raiders game day for all your post-game action. Have a great weekend, everyone.